But so what we then did was we we moved on from the Google Deep Dream algorithm to some more complicated neural network architecture that we could tweak in different ways um, so that we could begin to simulate different kinds of hallucinations. Like So some hallucinations are very rich and very complex. Others are very simple and very geometric. Some hallucinations appear out of nowhere. You know, they just spontaneously arise. Other hallucinations are transformations of things that are already there. So we were able to kind of create this space we could move around in to generate these different kinds of, of experience. So tell us what you learned from that. So what we were able to do, this is with um, my uh, colleagues, David Schwartzman and Kesuke Suzuki. They did all this work, by the way. I want to make that very clear. We went to people who have these hallucination in real life, people with Parkinson's disease, people with another condition you mentioned, Charles Bonnet syndrome, people who've had psychedelic experiences, not that were having them then and there, but, but have had them. And we asked them to pick examples from our models that were most similar to the experiences that they had. And that way we can test our hypotheses about the computational basis of these different kinds of hallucinations. So eventually, and we're not there yet, but eventually the idea is by doing this, we'll be able to make some predictions about what we might see if we put these people in brain imaging scanners and image what's happening while they have their hallucinations. That's the next step. And overall, the goal is, I think to put it in this larger frame, you know, when you want to understand something like how we experience the world, the nature of perception. It's often a very good idea to look at those situations where things are a little bit strange, you know, where people are experiencing things differently. You poke around in it and see what happens when things are a little bit out of whack. So the, the utility of studying hallucinations for me is, is firstly for the people that have them. We can help them understand their lived experience better but it also reflects back on our understanding of perception in general, because as we've been saying, fundamentally it's the same process.